Hey, good morning, fellow YouTube viewers. Thought I'd show you my little project I've been working on here the last couple of days. And uh, I had some venison legs left over. So I decided to uh, make up a little bit of sausage. I don't know how much I have here, but as you can see, this tray right here, I probably got a good 20 pounds of sausage here. I used a big old pork butt. I cut it up and cut off the meat off the venison legs and everything like that. And when meat was left on the bone, I then turned around and turned that into a kind of a thing for my tortillas. I'll take the sausages and I'll cut them up so they fit in the quart freezer bags. Once I get them all set up, I'll freeze them. We ate a little bit of the sausage last night and some gumbo. It was pretty good. Thought you guys might might enjoy seeing the sausage. It's just a simple recipe I used. Uh, they did call for four pounds of salt for ten pounds of pork butt. And I was like, in no freaking way, that much salt. I don't use that much salt to make jerky. Uh, so I probably only used about half a cup of salt for this 20 pounds of meat. Uh, my spices, pepper, brown sugar. I threw a little cornmeal in it this time so it would hold more naturally, grind it up with a little bit of ice water and all that. And when you're all done topping it off, I prefer a hard cider. This is for Gun Geek. You know, got to have that bottle of beer sitting there. And, you know, when we ain't got the bottle of beer sitting around, when I'm not screwing with sausages, my main business is I sell reloading supplies, and a lot of reloading supplies have been hard to get a hold of here the last couple of years. I just spent over six months waiting <clears throat> for some of this brass to show up. Now this is 357 maximum brass. I've got a thousand pieces here. I'm working on a project for a guy I used to work with. I'm reloading some. He has a Thompson container with a 10 inch barrel, so I'm reloading some brass for with him. I'm going to run uh, 20 grains of 5744. Uh, on top of that, I'm going to put a 158 grain Hornady XTP bullet, and I'm using a small pistol primer. In fact, he was just over here, dropped off some more brass that he had found, uh, and I'm probably going to do about seven or 800 pieces together for him. I also, I can have this stuff, if it's in stock, drop ship to your door for $4. So my price will include shipping plus the four dollars. You know, email me. I see people going to all these big companies all over. You know, I don't know if they have a better price or not. I don't think so. I've got this 357 maximum brass on GunBroker.com right now for 32.50 per hundred pieces, and shipping will go out by the uh, post office flat rate box. Is the easiest way for me to send them. I did have this first batch of brass offered on castbullets.com. That first batch was gone. I called, like I said earlier, to see if there was any of this brass was left. They had a thousand pieces left. I took the last thousand pieces my wholesaler had. So if you need this brass, it's $32.50 per hundred. You figure about $7.50 for shipping. Uh, that's the small flat rate box. If we get into the medium boxes, it's $13, and I will ship this stuff insured. I had been uh, wheel weights. A lot of guys talk about wheel weights all the time. I uh, had been collecting wheel weights for years and selling them off at about $45 for a medium flat rate box. And I'd send that off shipped. I've actually shipped a box of wheel weights to Hawaii. I don't think I've hit all 50 states with shipping wheel weights, but I've come pretty close in the last five or six years. Um, I've got a son's friend who has three automotive shops. I checked out all his wheel weights here a couple weeks ago when I was down to have my truck inspected, and uh, I couldn't find one lead wheel weight in the whole batch. Everything he had in his machines were all steel or zinc, um, and the weights that were coming off the cars were all also steel and zinc. Um, if there were any lead ones in the bucket, I probably couldn't have found 10 pounds and 100 pounds of stuff that was there. So if you have any lead wheel weights, you better grab them. Myself, I don't have any more to sell. I might have 25 or 30 pounds left out in the shed, and I'm going to melt those down, and I'll use those for my long colt loads. Um, they work pretty well. A little quick Lee Alox lube. I run a 9 grains of Accurate or something like that, and they work great out of my little H&R long colt rifle. Uh, I did pick up this past weekend when I was at a muzzleloader shoot. I picked up the Pennsylvania Hunter 54 Cal Flintlock. This gun is in beautiful condition. I'm asking $325 plus $25 shipping. It'll come with the case it came with. I'll throw a handful of round ball in there for you to try out. Uh, just an older fellow who's getting rid of some stuff. 
you know, so I figured I'd offer that here. Um, I'm going to wait about a week or so before I put that uh, out on the internet. Uh, I try to give the guys on castbullets.com uh, a heads up first uh, before I have to list on Gunbroker or anything like that. Gunbroker's getting to be a little bit of a pain in the ass. Um, people are purchasing things, they're not leaving feedback, or they purchase and they don't, you know, they don't pay you. I've had pretty good success over the last five or ten years, but here, here the last couple of months, it's gotten gun brokers gotten pretty kind of iffy. Uh, people email me questions, and they're odd questions. Uh, you, you know, you can figure out well, maybe I'm typing all this crap and I forgot. You know, I forgot a line. I forgot to tell you the, the inches of the barrel, or you know, just leave something commonsensical out. And I'll go back and I'll read, I'll read the thing, and I'm like, well, what the fuck? You know, I'm going. I put in. It's right here. Can't you read this? You know, it's, you know, is that a blue barrel? Well, no shit. Doesn't it look blue? I mean, does it look stainless? You know, oh, well, I have to have a heavy barrel. Well, I'm sorry. I just can't, you know, wave a magic wand over the top of this gun and make it a heavy barrel. And, uh, I, you know, I don't know. I just, I just can't figure it out. Everybody has an opinion. And I'm starting to lean towards the side that I'm getting spammed or somebody's trying to, you know, send me some crap. Um, because I get a lot of bizarre emails. I get a lot of spam on Wednesdays. Wednesday seems to be spam day for the internet. I'm talking 50, 60 spam emails just on a Wednesday alone. Um, and, and it's bizarre. Um, I don't know. You know, I, I thought maybe Gunbroker, I think Gunbroker's been hacked. That's what I think. I think there's a lot of hackers in there, just like over on Fleabay, you know. Uh, there's another one I can't understand. Bullet molds, you know. <laughs> I sold on how many used bullet molds at uh, twenty-five to fifty dollars a piece. I go over on eBay and they all start at fifty dollars. Granted, you know there are some used bullet molds that will, you know, you can get a few more dollars for. But I'm like, holy shit! <laughs> you know, I'm going, I got a double cavity round ball mold here. You know, I want thirty-five dollars for seventy-five, six bucks for shipping, and I'm happy. These freaking guys are asking sixty. I mean, I can get you a brand new mold. It's going to cost you anywhere from sixty to one hundred and twenty dollars. You know, handles are going to be twenty-five or thirty. Um, I, I don't know. It, it, it's just so friggin' bizarre. I don't. I really don't know what to do anymore. Uh, a lot of people getting into shooting. They all seem to be in their late forties, early fifties. Uh, they jump right in. They're buying a fifteen hundred dollar rifle. They do all this <laughs> research on the internet, and I go out to the club and I see them trying to sight in at a hundred yards. You know, I tell the guy now, why don't you try to sight that thing in at 25 yards? You know, see if you can hit the target first. Uh, it's just bizarre. Um, in my entire reloading career, and I started casting round ball when I was 14 years old, and I'm 56 now. And since I've had my business about 20 some odd years, I have sold, I want to say three, maybe four reloading manuals. And I always have some reloading manuals laying around. And, you know, I get a hold of these man. I get a hold of some of these manuals. Here's a nice little Hodgdon booklet right here. All right. It has the Hodgdon IMR and Winchester smokeless powder because we all know that Hodgdon owns everybody now. They also own GoX. GoX is, the, is one of the original black powders. You always hear about their plant blowing up all the time. Um, this little booklet has 76 pages in it. Uh, two pages are for notes. It has cowboy action loads. It even has long range rifle loads and it has Pyrodex pellets and metallic cartridges, which I have a lot of pellets left over that I haven't sold throughout the years. And we've got them from 44 Rem Mag, 4440, Long Colt, and 4570, the different Pyrodex pellets that you can put in these cartridges. And I haven't given any of those a try yet, but I think I'm going to have to try that. I've got a bunch of Long Colt cartridges and 4570 cartridges. You know, I've got these pellets laying around. I might as well drop them in the cartridge and mark them. And, eh, it'd be fun for plinking someday. And, yeah, you know, the speeds aren't too bad. You know, I'm talking, you know, 900, 1300, 1200 feet a second. You know, depending on what cartridge you're dropping in. This has triple seven loads for you guys that, you know, want to load something that they say is cleaner. But I really don't see it myself. You got all your pistol loads, your pistol data, your rifle data. You've got, you know, your basics reloading. Don't be a moron. Um, things like that. Rifle loads. And I'll tell you, I've got a good handful of these laying around. And if you send me, uh, I'll say six bucks, 
I'll mail one of these to you. It's 76 pages. It's a nice little reloading catalog. It has notes and stuff you put in the back. I refer to this all the time. I have all kinds of reloading catalogs. I mean, I can go back. I've got NRA magazines back to 1939. I can do a lot of stuff. Um, that's it for... All right, fellow YouTubers. There was a friend of mine that stopped by here, so I was bullshitting to him. I wrapped up my sausage. I guess I got about a dozen bags here, a little over a pound a piece. I'll freeze those. I left some out tonight. I don't know. Maybe we'll do some pasta sauce or I'm pretty much think some corn chowder potato soup with the sausage is what I would like. Remember, you know, if you want this loading manual here, this Hodgdon manual, it's got Hodgdon, IMR, Winchester stuff in it. It does have loads for Pyrodex and 777. You send me six bucks, I'll mail one to you. Trust me, there ain't a lot of profit in it. By the time I get done with the envelope in this, I'm a couple of bucks down, so I'm not making much on it. I just like to move the reloading manuals because I really see a lot of stuff on the internet. People are talking, and I'm trying to figure out where they're coming up with some of the reloading recipes at. I mean, I've experimented a lot. I have a lot of strange things myself, but, you know, I figure a manual, you know, I see a lot of guys ask a lot of really basic questions. And I think maybe they had to read the first 10 or 12 pages in the reloading manual. And that'll do me for about now. You know, remember, I got that Remington Maximum Brass, $32.50 for uh, 100 pieces. That does not include shipping. I also have a lot of old American Rifleman magazines. And I have uh, another magazine. Let me pull these out. I used to collect a lot of magazines and books. That's why I have a lot of this stuff. Uh, this is 1964 Gun World. I had two sets. This uh, particular group right here, I have one magazine missing. But you can see, you know, this is when Hollywood movie stars used to be seen. This is Lee Marvin over the top of an elk he had killed, okay? Um, you know, you've got some really good stuff here. You've got, you know, articles on the newest. Smith & Wesson 41 mag. All right, and this is June of 64. You can't beat this. How to customize your 03. All right, sheep hunting, Winslow rifles, how to customize one. Long range handguns, vermin shooting. There we go. Doing a little hunting from your motorbike. I mean, some of these guys have got some stuff, you know. Winchester 1400 shotgun and Marlins 99 carbine. You know, some of this stuff you just can't. Um, Winchester's new Varmeter and 225. And what I like about a lot of these magazines is they have some good ads in them, like Army in Africa. You know, they don't even advertise this stuff anymore. Um, the Remington ads, Guest Shot. Articles by Steve McQueen. You don't find this stuff in magazines anymore. I mean, what, what, you know, other than, you know, the one Ted Nugent, I mean, who else do you hear talk about it? I guess Eric Estrada is a NRA director now. We never see him do anything anymore, you know, the old guy from Chips. So if you want to read some good magazines, I've got these from about, I want to say 1963 to about 1969. For the full year, year issues, I'd like $60. Which isn't bad, 12 magazines for 60 bucks, you know. And uh, I'm going to ship these to you. It'd be $10 shipping. Uh, unless you buy more, and then we'll throw them in one of them flat rate boxes. And uh, we can work on the price from there. Um, you know, one of those magazines you buy nowadays are 5 or 6 bucks, and they're 99% ads. With no real story in them. I mean, how many times can you read about a black rifle? Or, hey, look at this hot new item. You know, he goes, this is what you want to get. He goes... You really need to pick up some of the older antique magazines. And, you know, 60 bucks for a year, that's nothing. This one's missing a month. I'll let this one go for $55. Um, we got a lot of good reading in here, especially when you can read articles and see ads that aren't so politically correct, where they tell you, you know, you're going to buy this, you're going to get this bullet, and you're going to go out and bust them big. Hey, that's about it. Remember, you want the reloading catalog, you want the magazines, Get a hold of me at blackpowderbill at yahoo.com. I'm easy enough to find. I take uh, money orders or any kind of bank check you want to send me. Uh, I really don't care for PayPal because they charge too much. 
I would really rather make the sales off of here then I don't have to pay everybody their fees and go through all their crap. Uh, it just makes it easier. Uh, I do sell this stuff local, so please email me, you know, before you go bid on anything on gunbroker.com. You got to send me a note. Remember, I get the Gun World magazines, you got NRA magazines from 1939 up. I actually kind of quit cataloging the NRA magazines about year 2000. I just throw them in a box now. I even have old muzzle blast magazines from back in the 40s and 50s, if you're interested in those. Well, i got to get my sausage in the freezer, and uh, I think I'm going to start my potato corn ch chowder soup tonight. That's all I got. Kick me a note. Again, this is Black Powder Bill. I'm easy enough to find on the Internet. Give me a shout. Talk to you later. Bye.